Hi, Dennis here at Capital Training Shoe, and I'm here with Rodney Honpath. I think I actually pronounced his name right. He told me that's a Finnish name. So, anyway, glad to have you here, Rodney. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. It's going to be a great journey for her. Rodney just dropped his horse off here, and we're getting ready to start. So, he just had turned her loose in the arena, so I told him I'd like for him to, to catch her, mm -hmm. and I want to watch you catch her, and then you can tell me, bring her up here and tell me about her and okay. what you'd like to have sure done. Will. Raven. What's her name? Raven. 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 Okay. Raven is a nine-year-old Frisian cross. So. Um, okay. She's had minimal round pin training from me. Uh -huh. She's been saddled. Um, she's had tarps on her. She's had sur sables on her. No buck, no hump, no nothing. Okay. Um, so I'm just wanting to continue her on with her training. And uh, get her ready to go. Have you done any kind of groundwork on her other than just saddling her and... and, and just, just lunging her around the round pen, changing directions. But where she came from, she had no training whatsoever for her first basically nine years of life. Um, and so she's, what, what I tend to say, she's slightly lazy <laughs> because it takes her a little bit to get her going. And then once she, I mean, and that's all the farther she's really went, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can see you've got her gentle, and that's good. Um, she's uh, she's a, what I consider like a in-your-pocket horse. When you go out into the pasture, she's right on top of you all the time. Uh, uh, no, like I say, no buck, no kick. Um, she's super gentle, every, you know, since I've had her, and she's just... So, yeah. so in your opinion, is in your pocket, in your what you described, is that good? Uh, sometimes she's a little bit too much in your pocket, too pushy, <laughs> because she was what I say she was loved too much. You know, yeah. And, it, it, and it, which is, I mean, it's pr pretty common that happens. So, um, but she's, I mean, she doesn't have a mean bone in her body. She just doesn't. She just, okay. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I've. I've watched about all I can sit here and stand to watch. <laughs> I appreciate you showing me um, her as she is mm -hmm. and what she's been through, and, and it's good that you've got her gentle. Uh, if you'll let me have the lead rope, and uh, and then if, if I can get you to maybe go over here a little bit so I don't, I don't have to worry about running over you. Um, <laughs> First thing you do, knock your hat off. That's a horse training trick right there. <laughs> so the reason I did that is because she's been, she's been, uh, in my opinion, that that you're calling in your pocket is obnoxious behavior that they use to control people with. And and if that continues. It goes from being cute to obnoxious to dangerous. <laughs> so I don't want her afraid of me any more than you do. However, she's got to she's got to keep her ground at the distance, and and the reason being is that that distance, Rodney, gives us power, and we can outmaneuver a horse from a distance from here. Even I can move, counter move her uh, faster than she can. Because <laughs> she's got to move 12 feet and I only got to move 6 inches, you know, because of, of the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the dynamics of the distance. So, but when I, when I saw you catch her, I liked that she stood there. That was good. However, you missed a couple signs as you were going, and most horses would have left you. So, so what, what you've done with her to this point is, is helping you out, and it's kind of masking over uh, um, her really paying attention to you and, and listening to you as she should. So she's allowing you to catch her, and she's allowing you to saddle her up, and she's allowing you to, to do some things because she's kind and uh, a, a lot of horses wouldn't a lot of horses would have left when you approached her like so that I can tell you like out in the pastures and stuff she has never she never leaves me 
amaze me. Sure. You know, um, when I go out the hall to her to do anything with her, she stand, basically comes to me, stands there living. And but I mean, other besides that, her training has been minimal. Okay. As, you know, I just say I've I've lunged her, uh -huh. saddled her, and just kind of see what she, how her mind was, and I just say she no no buck no nothing with the saddle. Even with the tar, you know, tied to the saddle, she nothing. She just you know. That, well, I mean, that's just kind of her demeanor. She's just kind of yeah, you're, you're you're fortunate, and they're not all that way, you know. Yeah, and, right. and and sometimes, sometimes uh, that kind of stuff done prematurely can cause reactions that we have to really, you know, deal with oh, later on. But you're fortunate. She she was kind about yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, so, to me, uh, lunging is more more than just. Than just her going around me, it's a, it's how she's feeling when she's going around me, where she's looking, um, how fast or how slow she's going, is she attentive to me or is she making the decisions? I'm actually quote lunging her right now, you know, because every time she takes a step that I haven't told her to take, she has stepped out of my picture, and and when I when I raise up, that's all I'm doing is charging the air with energy, and I'm getting bigger, and that's why she's staying further away. So this is where I'll, I'll control my energy from down low, very little, to very high, depending on what, what I'm getting. And this starts the communication, just like we're having right now between you and I. You're listening to my words and you're responding to my words. So it's not just me out here talking. It's you hearing and, and you you responding back and I'm, I'm watching your body language to see if, if what I'm saying, how it's registering with you and if you're if you're understanding or if you're not. If you're not, I'm gonna come back and, and try to say what I just said in a different way. And that's what I'll do with a horse. If they don't understand what I want, I'll, I'll try to come at them in a different way. But each thing that I do uh, Rodney is a is a word in horse language in my opinion and and the first word that I told her was keep your distance away from me and and that we do that as humans and we don't know it I don't, I don't think it not we do know it but we don't we don't think of it in those terms you know a, a common greeting here is a handshake you know and the, if if when you come in that barn, I'd start rubbing on your face. I'd hope you got your truck and just left. You know, <laughs> what kind of a nutcase have I come to here? <laughs> but these horses, we tend to look at them as as dogs or cats or, or a pet. And 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 I and I want to I want to have a kind, gentle horse that that I enjoy being around just as much as anybody. But to me. Um, the level of respect far trumps anything else. And and if we cross a line of her being a little bit cautious and maybe the next time you go out to catch her in the pasture she's not right there on you, that's okay. We can smooth that up really easily. That that's a, that's an easy that's the easiest thing to fix in the world. Just pet them a little while and they'll they'll forgive you and go on. But if we allow her to continue just because basically you were standing still and she was walking over and she'd go over and she turned her butt to me and and she, and you know you're going to be around other people and things like that and 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 pretty soon it, you know you're going to find that that uh, what seems harmless ends up being you know, something you don't want see she she just turned and left right there and i'm gonna start i'm gonna start asking her yeah, communicating here with her a little bit i i like that right right there now that while while I was standing there, she should be moving her front end over to her left a little bit here, there. I let her have that step. She's uh, right at the moment being a little bit protective of me because the first thing I did was raise up and do things she's not familiar with. And horses, just like us, our minds are not comfortable in the unfamiliar. So we don't we don't want that. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's strange to us. We don't what what the heck's going on here? So so now she's she's being just a little bit defensive. I asked her to move her feet now, and she's just standing down there. I, I don't want to get close to you. And, and, and I don't mind that, but I can't leave her there either. So this is the balance between one side and the other side. What I was saying that I really liked before I start, had to start talking there was she stepped completely parallel to me, and she looked around, and she looked at me out of her off eye. In other words, if I'm on the right side, she was looking at me out of her left eye. And that's a, that's a very positive sign because that's a horse that, that's saying, I want to be with you, and I will let you uh, move my feet. I will let you make the decisions for me. I like that. Took longer for her to come off that lead rope than I like, but, but she took a couple steps, and then she said, yes, yes, sir, what can I do? So now, she is in a posture right now that she feels comfortable in. And, and she's got her hip hidden behind her shoulders. And, and the, the significance to that uh, from a horse, this is, this is what a horse uh, that's unsure will do. They'll want to just face up to you all the time. And, and by being faced up here, she's hiding her vital organs. Everything she needs to live with except for eating and breathing is in front of this shoulder, but, but her heart and everything, and lungs, everything, everything behind that shoulder, so she's, she's protected. So what I want to do is, is, is show her that she can open up, I open it up, I mean move that shoulder over. See here, she said, I don't want to turn loose of my protectiveness here. I want her to be able to do that without doing that, see? And when she, when she jumps back to that, you're crowding that just a little bit. Now, the attitude at, with which she's leaving right now is significant. Because yes, she moved her shoulders. She wasn't comfortable in opening up to me. And when she walked forward, she threw her head down and, and walked like this. Well... The attitude behind that gesture is less than conducive to our communication. She said, I don't want you to, I don't want you to, I'll screw you up. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> okay, now let's see if we can set that up again. Set that up, move that shoulder over, she's thinking. You see this distance here. I can create energy here, and she'll move away from that energy there. There's that head slamming down again. Better, much better. Now, if she's going faster than I want as she goes around, I'll take a hold of her nose just a little bit and move her left hind foot up in front of like that and then send her back on forward. Like that and send her forward. See when I, she still hasn't got convinced yet that my yes is yes and my no is no. She will be just real shortly, but right now she's used to people moving and she hasn't had to respond. So she's been kind of allowed to be, um, to ignore you. That, that's all. So when I, when I make a slight suggestion, I want her to prepare and get ready. Raise that energy up again. She raised her head. She thought she could back away. And then the first two steps was sticking her nose down on the ground Okay, and then it's it going to take her probably a little bit to, to smooth out here again. Wrong way, into pressure there, which is normal for horses to do that. When I get her off of the outside boundary, I'm doing that with my hand right there, see? 
but I'm staying right here and I'm I'm raising up some energy and I'm basically riding her right now. I am my left leg if I was on her. You see that? And if I was on her and she was looking off to the right, she would feel my left leg right there at that cinch and she would she would then look to the left. So I'm wanting her to look to the left and find that freedom between those boundaries right now as she's going along. Pretty nice. Now I'm going to let her go straight. That's nice. I'm going to bring her back to the left. I'm going to let her go straight. She's crowded in here. She's pushing away from me. Trying to go faster than I want, so I'll take that hip away. When I, when I pulled on her nose just a little bit, she ignored me. She didn't let me just softly move that hip. I want, because basically this, this, uh, this lead rope is the left bridle rein. To me, if, uh, if groundwork doesn't carry over to the back, it's a waste, complete waste of time. So every move I'm making out here is with the intention of being on her back and communicating clearly with her on, the, on her back. When she starts moving, she's taking about four, five, six steps listening to me, then she's taking over. That's when you're seeing me, yeah. you get involved. Right. You see, if I let her stay in that state of mind where she unhooks from me, and she's making all the decisions again, even though she might be doing not anything terrible, she's just walking around, that's what I want her to do, but, but how she's walking around, where she's looking, the posture that she's walking around, it, that, that's why that becomes important. So, now, if you notice that her attitude about standing there is getting completely different. You see, at first, first when I got her off of me, it, it kind of rattled her a little bit, so I compromised trust some. And it was down here, and she's looking at me like this. Now that I've moved her feet a little bit, I have elevated respect in her, but the trust level is coming up as well because she has felt the, the freedom of the sweet spot. And I'd like for you to watch and see if you can see who's putting the release in there, either her or me. And I'm, I'm going to just let you watch and, and see. So I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her again to step step out that way, and walk around me over over here. And I want her to stop right here, and stay parallel to me. That's the that's the map that I'm going to I'm going to ask her. Who put the release in? You did. She stopped. Right? She's the one that's going to need to put the release in there. Yes. And, and the reason I was bumping on her nose is because when I stepped from behind her shoulder to in front, she picked her nose up and ran off with me, which is exactly what she'd have been doing if you'd have tried to stop her if you'd been on her back. <laughs> You see, and boy, there's nothing more frightening than a horse that's grabbed a hold of the bit and is leaving town with you, and you don't have any brakes up there. So, so we've got to we've got to put some some understanding in her. I need it for her to open up again here because see when she when she's opening up, she's wanting to push on me with her shoulder move her hip away and run away from me to the left. There's the posture and the attitude I want her to be in. I, I did need to shorten the lead rope up to find it, 
But when she did find it, now she put, she stepped in there and put the slack in there. I'm gonna have to go out and touch her now. Even though I moved all the way across the little arena here, I knew what I wanted her to do. That was my picture. She, she wasn't trying. So I then did whatever I needed to do. At first I started off with as little as I needed to, which, which was to move across that shoulder up into her neck and get her stopped. She didn't know, she didn't understand that. So she ran into a boundary and then she finally was able to find what I wanted down there. And she came to a stop and gave me an opportunity to let her rest in a sweet spot. See, she's, she's still too anxious about hiding her, hiding her hip. When she bends like that, that shoulder comes at me. I need her to straighten up and move her shoulder. See a horse that a horse that hasn't been humanized with a lot of petting and and let's just say less than productive interaction they get kind of numb so it takes more to get them to move their feet for a time and sometimes when they do it it scares them because they, they wonder what, what what did i do wrong you, you didn't do anything wrong you're just not trying so i'll ask with a little bit and if they try they find an instantaneous and complete release if she doesn't try i've got to raise it up otherwise i'm training her to ignore me every time i ask her to do something I get something working on this left side before we go to the right side, I think. That was nice. Very nice. That's not. Nice. Not. Nice. Nice that she moved. She's still crowding me. She's, she's just braced up, almost daring me to, to get her to do something. Not, not with a bad attitude, that's just, just how she, you know, has learned to survive and, and that's okay. So I'm gonna take that front end all the way around here. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna enlist the help of a a flag here because I can I can be more efficient with my energy with it. It's sticking right there, that little blue one, if you would. Thank you. So I can use this to help me. I like your lead rope. It's got good feel, but it's a little longer than then, then I need it. It kind of gets in the way, which that's all right. Sometimes we need that, but for this, I need to be a little closer. I don't want that front end to move away from there, and I don't want her to think about leaving. I want her front end to move away. Watch when I move that flag and where I move it to. See how I'm able to move that energy with the, with this flag that I couldn't, couldn't do on foot and I just, I'm only asking for one thing here. It looks like chaos right at the moment, but I'm, I'm only asking for that step right there without her thinking about running off this way. When I, when I want her to go, When I want her to go forward, I'll tell her I want to go forward, but that's not what I'm asking right now. Push it on me with that shoulder. Open up to freedom.
there. <laughs> there. Oh yeah. So because she opened up, because she yielded, now I can pet her with this thing. This thing isn't the problem. It's, it's her interpretation at this moment of what I'm doing. And I've got to show her, no, this is what I want. This is what I want. When she does what I want, I'll be as kind to her as I can be. But she's got to try. I'm going to... I'm going to see if I can get her to take that front end another step to the to her right. Like that. Go another one. There. When she goes, I'm careful not to grab her with this. I need to let her feel the freedom in moving away. I, I don't mind at this point if she goes too far because it's been so hard for her to find it going away. That was, a, that was the nicest move she's made so far, you see? And you see her instantly show signs of release so since I didn't put the release in there I didn't have any contact with the with the halter the only thing she was feeling was my energy here so I feel like that the, where she let down was how she was feeling inside she got it she had a change in perspective instead of feeling like that I was after her and punishing her for some reason she found out right there oh i'm if i just move away from that it's going to quit so all of a sudden she had she has a role in this conversation just as i do i like it nice Let her sit over there a minute. When she dropped her head down and left, yes, that was what I wanted her to do, but the attitude behind how she was leaving wasn't, wasn't what it needed to be. Yes, I wanted her to be able to put her nose down and turn all the way around if, if I wanted her to do that, but when she left, she was looking for a way out. When she was taking these one step at a time, there that's a step in thought let her have a moment in that now I'm going to ask her to come forward so now I change my energy focus from here to here which is behind the shoulder and 
and she was going to use a good thing as a tool. That's what I wanted to do the first time I asked, told you I wanted to do there. What I was getting at before I said her, she was going to use a good thing as a tool against me. That's why I don't repeat and repeat and repeat <laughs> because repetitiveness for repetitive sake will produce resentment. I'll repeat, I'll repeat something enough until I get understanding and then I'm going to switch to something else. Otherwise, I become boring to the horse and all they want to do is away from me. But when she gets, she gets this, 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 this take her from being an in your pocket horse to an in your hand horse, and you've got control of those feet with your hand. Now you've got you've got the steering wheel in your hand, and and things are going to go well your way. So, but anyway, this is the process that she'll go through with everything here, and I think you can see some tremendous change in in, in just a few minutes here what she's done. So to me, this is a very good quitting place. You see, rather than just, you know, start trying to turn her into a broke horse in one day, just let her have a chance to build on the foundation of when she feels pressure, all she's got to do is move away, and that pressure leaves. And, and if, she, if she listens to me, life is good. If she takes over like that, life gets, <laughs> isn't so good. She's going to be a very nice horse. She's she's smart. She's pretty athletic, you know. Uh, she's got nice high withers, and and that's conducive to getting a horse to stop and turn and and do things, you know, easier. We get we get this working up here, and she'll she'll put it to good use for you in this good body. I think you'll have a really nice horse. 